Hello, my dear students. How are you? I hope you must be enjoying my lectures. I am Professor H R Sani. Today we will have another topic, and the topic is vectors. So first of all, let us understand what is a physical quantity. Any quantity which can be measured and expressed in numbers is known as a physical quantity. For example, length. Area, time, etc., are all physical quantities because they can be measured and expressed in terms of numbers with proper units. Now, all the physical quantities can be divided into two broad categories: number one, scalars, and number two, vectors. The quantities which are known completely by their magnitude only are known as scalar quantities. or simply scalars for example mass length time area volume speed distance etc are scalar quantities and the quantities which are known completely by their magnitude and direction are known as vector quantities or simply vectors for example displacement velocity force etc are vector quantities so these quantities are known by their magnitude as well as direction now how to represent a vector a vector is represented with the help of an arrow the length of the arrow gives us the magnitude of the vector according to a conveniently chosen scale and the arrow head gives us the direction of the vector for example if we want to represent a velocity of 50 km per hour due east 50 km per hour due east due east means its direction is towards east then now these are the directions north south east and west i will choose a suitable scale i will say that let 1 cm equal to 10 km per hour that means for a magnitude of 10 km per hour i have to take an arrow of length 1 cm and therefore for a velocity of 50 km per hour i will take an arrow of length 5 cm like this so this arrow oa whose length is how much 5 cm this represents a velocity of 50 km per hour because the length of this arrow represents the velocity of 50 km and the arrow head drawn towards east tell tells us that its direction is towards east now we have various types of vectors number 1 equal vectors equal vectors two vectors are said to be equal if their magnitude as well as direction is the same for example if a and b are two equal vectors then i can write a vector equal to b vector and geometrically i can represent these vectors by arrows drawn parallel to each other and having equal lengths for example Uh, this is the arrow for vector a and this is the arrow for vector b as you can see length of both arrows is the same that means magnitude of this arrow is equal to magnitude and they are parallel and arrow head in the same direction that means they are equal in magnitude and have the same direction therefore they are equal vectors then negative vector one vector is said to be negative of the other vector if their magnitude is equal but direction is opposite to each other and if a is negative of vector b then i can write a equal to minus b this means vector a is negative of vector b or i can write vector b is negative of vector a and geometrically i can represent these like this these arrows of equal lengths but 
parallel to each other but in the opposite directions magnitude is the same but direction is opposite to each other then we have null vector or zero vector a vector having zero magnitude and an arbitrary direction is known as a null vector or a zero vector then we have collinear vectors vectors are said to be collinear if they act along the same line or along parallel lines they may be parallel or they may be anti parallel if they are parallel then the angle between them is 0 degree and if they are anti parallel then the angle between them is 180 degree then we have co initial vectors co initial that means having the same initial point that means having the same tail so vectors which have the same tail are known as the co initial vectors for example the vectors a b c and d shown here are co initial vectors because they have the same tail at the point o then we have coplanar vectors the vectors which lie in the same plane are called coplanar vectors then we have orthogonal vectors two vectors are said to be orthogonal if they are perpendicular to each other that is if the angle between them is 90 degree for example if vector a is like this and vector b is perpendicular to the vector a so this angle is 90 degree then a and b are called orthogonal vectors then we have unit vector a vector which has magnitude equal to 1 is known as a unit vector so remember a vector of unit magnitude is known as a unit vector and a unit vector in the direction of vector a is denoted by a cap it is read as cap a hat a or caret a and the magnitude of this is 1 a cap and any vector a can be written as the product of the magnitude of vector a and a unit vector in the direction of a that is a vector equal to a a cap then we have unit orthogonal vectors a unit vector along x axis is always denoted by i cap this is standard symbol for a unit vector along x axis i cap a unit vector along y axis is represented by j cap and a unit vector along z axis is represented by k cap so remember i cap j cap and k cap are unit vectors along x axis y axis and z axis respectively so therefore magnitude of i cap equal to magnitude of j cap equal to magnitude of k cap each equal to 1 and angle between i cap and j cap angle between j cap and k cap and angle between k cap and i cap is 90 degree therefore these vectors are called unit orthogonal vectors unit orthogonal vectors unit because their magnitude is 1 orthogonal because they are mutually perpendicular to each other then we have position vector a vector which indicates the position of a particle with respect to a fixed origin at a given instant is known as the position vector of that particle for example if these are the axes of coordinates origin x axis y axis z axis then we take a point p here join o with p and put an arrow head here this vector op which is denoted by generally denoted by r vector is the position vector of the point p with respect to the origin then we have displacement vector suppose these are the axes of coordinates again and we take two points x axis y axis z axis point a point b origin 
let position vector of point a be r1 position vector of point b be r2 now if a particle moves from a to b then its displacement vector is represented by this arrow the length of this arrow is equal to ab and its direction is towards the point b and if the particle moves from b to a then the length of this arrow is again from b to a but its direction is from b towards a then the arrow head will be put at a so this is known as the displacement vector and now we come to localized or fixed vector a vector whose initial point which is also called the tail of a vector is fixed or localized is called a fixed or localized vector then we have a non localized or free vector a vector whose tail or initial point is not fixed is known as a non localized or a free vector so these are the various types of vectors now we come to another important topic regarding vectors that is multiplication of vectors multiplication of vectors multiplication of vectors vector product is of two types number 1 dot product or scalar product or scalar product number 2 cross product or vector product we will discuss these two types of products of vectors one by one so number 1 dot product or scalar product dot product or scalar product suppose we have two vectors a and b vector a is in this direction and vector b is in this direction and theta is the angle between these two vectors then dot product of the vectors a and b is written as a dot b it is read as a dot b and is given by the product of the magnitude of vector a the magnitude of vector b and cosine of the angle between a and b that is a dot b equal to ab cos theta now a is a vector b is a vector but their dot product that is ab cos theta is a scalar quantity that is why dot product is also called scalar product now we have properties of dot product number 1 dot product is commutative that is a dot b equal to b dot a and let us prove it a dot b equal to ab cos theta a b cos theta and b dot a equal to b a cos theta b a cos theta and because here a b are the magnitudes of the vectors a and b so magnitudes means they are scalar quantities and they can be written one for the other that means i can interchange the positions of a and b so i can write this as equal to a b cos theta so from these two equations 1 and 2 we find that a dot b is a b cos theta and b dot a is also a b cos theta therefore a dot b equal to b dot a and this proves that the dot product is commutative then the second property is that the dot product is distributive that is a dot b plus c a dot b plus c 
इक्वल टू ए डॉट बी प्लस ए डॉट सी दिस इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द स्टेटमेंट दैट डॉट प्रोडक्ट इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिव नाउ नेक्स्ट प्रॉपर्टी इज डॉट प्रोडक्ट ऑफ टू पैरल वैक्टर्स इफ ए एंड बी आर टू पैरल वैक्टर्स देन द एंगल बिटवीन दैम इज जीरो डिग्री एंड देर फोर ए डॉट बी विल बी इक्वल टू ए बी कॉस जीरो डिग्री एंड कॉस जीरो डिग्री इज वन सो दिस इज इक्वल टू ए बी इंटू वन इक्वल टू ए बी दैट मीन्स द डॉट प्रोडक्ट ऑफ टू पैरल वैक्टर्स इज इक्वल टू द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ दोज टू वैक्टर्स एंड इफ दे आर एंटी पैरल then the angle between them is 180 degree and therefore the dot product of two anti parallel vectors will be a dot b equal to ab cos 180 degree and cos 180 is minus 1 so therefore this will be equal to ab into minus 1 equal to minus ab now we come to dot product of a vector with the vector itself that is a dot a a dot a equal to magnitude of a into magnitude of a because here b is also equal to a into cos of the angle between a and a that is zero degree angle is zero so cos zero degree cos zero is one so this will be equal to a square so remember the dot product of a vector with the vector itself is equal to the square of the magnitude of that vector similarly b dot b b dot b will be equal to b square c dot c this will be equal to c square and so on now we come to dot product of two orthogonal vectors as i told you orthogonal vectors are those which are perpendicular to each other that is the angle between them is 90 degree so therefore if a and b are two orthogonal vectors then a dot b equal to ab cos 90 degree because angle between a and b is how much 90 degree and cos 90 is zero so therefore this is equal to zero so remember keep in mind that the dot product of two orthogonal vectors is zero and conversely if the dot product of two vectors is zero then they must be orthogonal vectors that is the corollary okay if the dot product of two vectors is zero then they must be orthogonal vectors now we come to dot product of unit orthogonal vectors that is i cap dot i cap this is equal to magnitude of i cap into magnitude of i cap into cos of the angle between i cap and i cap that is cos 0 degree and this is equal to 1 into 1 into cos 0 is 1 and this comes out to be equal to 1 so remember i dot i equal to 1 similarly j dot j equal to 1 k dot k equal to 1 and therefore for remembering this i can write i dot i equal to j dot j equal to k dot k each equal to 1 and i will put it in a bracket please remember this again i dot j equal to magnitude of i into magnitude of j into cos of the angle between i and j that is cos 90 degree and this is equal to 1 into 1 into cos 90 is 0 so this is equal to 0 so therefore i dot j equal to 0 similarly j dot k equal to 0 k dot i equal to 0 and therefore for remembering this i will write a i dot j equal to j dot k equal to k dot i each equal to 0 and i will put it in the bracket box so that you can remember it now we come to the next very important property 
डॉट प्रोडक्ट ऑफ टू वैक्टर्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ देयर रेक्टेंगुलर कॉम्पोनेंट्स सपोज वी हैव टू वैक्टर्स ए एंड बी वैक्टर ए हैज थ्री three components along x axis y axis and z axis these are called rectangular components of the vector a if these components are denoted by ax vector ay vector az vector then i can write vector a equal to ax vector plus ay vector plus az vector now i told you that any vector can be written as the product of the magnitude of that vector into a unit vector in the direction of that vector so i can write ax vector as equal to magnitude of ax into unit vector in the direction of ax that is unit vector along x axis and that is i cap ay can be written as ay into j cap and az can be written as az into k cap similarly b vector can be written as bx by plus vz bx vy and bz are the rectangular components of the vector v along x axis y axis and z axis respectively and this is equal to bx i cap plus by j cap plus bz k cap therefore a dot b a dot b equal to the put the values of a and b here that is ax i cap plus ay j cap plus az k cap dot bx i cap plus by j cap plus bz k cap bracket close now we are to keep in mind that i dot i will be one j dot j will be one and k dot k will be one but i dot j j dot k and k dot i will be zero so if i keep this thing in mind then i get this as equal to ax bx because it will be ax bx i dot i that is one so it will be ax bx then it will be ax by i dot j that is zero then it will be ax bz i dot k that is again zero then it will be ay bx j dot i that is zero then it will be ay by j dot j and j dot is one so it will be ay by similarly ay bz j dot k will be zero then az bx k dot i will be zero then az by k dot j will be zero and then az bz k dot k will be one so it will be az bz so remember a dot b equal to ax bx ax bx plus ay by plus az bz so please remember this commit this formula to memory so knowing ax ay az bx by bz we can find the dot product of these two vectors then we can also find the angle between two ve given vectors a and b let us see how if the angle between the vectors a and b is theta then a dot b equal to ab cos theta ab cos theta therefore cos theta equal to a dot b over ab a dot b over ab equal to a dot b is ax bx plus ay by plus az bz over ab now if ax ay az bx by bz are known we can calculate this value 
and a means magnitude of a b means magnitude of b if they are also known we can calculate cos theta and from there we can find what is cos theta equal to so that is how we can find the angle between any two given vectors so that is all for today's lecture i hope you must have enjoyed please study and like share and subscribe my channel Thank you very much.